Hello and welcome back. We are here for game two of T1 up against Firax. As unfortunately, if you guys did miss it, we did have to delay this and make it a recording of game two and onwards of T1 versus Firax due to suspected DDoS attacks during game number one. And, uh, you know, trying our best. It's a very frustrating situation, but just trying to make sure that we can finish the series. And once again, apologies to everybody watching and all the fans out there, and of course to the teams and the players. Just trying to get through this as best as we possibly can. That's right. Fake a reboot in progress here as we move into the second game. It was a Senna quirky composition. T1 got the victory with in game one. If you did miss it, so let's see how this draft evolves here. Firex have chosen blue side for this second game. And let's see how uh, the adaptation is going to come through here because I thought the play we saw from Firex was pretty good overall, trying to punish the Twisted Fate, but the team fights left a lot to be desired. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you're playing against a really strong team, and I, I do agree. I think their showing was very nice, and. Now that they move over to the over to the blue side, rather, T1 are going to do the job of banning Senna, which is nice. We don't have to see Senna. It's gone. And uh, they're going to ban Nautilus as well. Varus Nautilus, very powerful, very popular. Kind of difficult to get on the blue side, though. Yeah. Ash gone. The Aatrox banned away from Zaius again. And also the Lucian ban coming through. Even though it hasn't been very successful, it's still very popular in scrims is what uh, word on the street is, is the Rakan will also be banned away here. So first pick now to Firex, a lot open. Could go for the Varus, and that's what they're gonna do. You know, even with Smolder open here for T1, the Varus could be quite strong into that, even Nautilus list. Uh, and also, you know, there's a few other picks we could see, like the Zeri, for example, but T1 have kind of shied away from that pick in the past. Gumusi not a player who particularly has prioritized it even when it was very meta. So let's see what the answer is going to be. Oh, some Faker Oriana. Yeah, currently 9-0 and zero and uh, has a 61% win rate, 61.8 over the course of everybody playing it this season. So very powerful. And the Kalista is going to be pulled in here, and now you have no idea what this bottom lane is going to look like for the side of T1 because that could be support, that could be for Guma and some random weird thing for Karia. We just don't know. Yeah, it could be Nico, unless it's taken away. And uh, Nico actually is disabled on this match yeah. as well, anyways. <laughs> um, so that's not going to happen. I saw the Nocturne, I got excited. I was like, oh, they're going to deny it. But it's actually disabled. New week, but same patch. And Azir to be the lock into Orianna. Not feeling too great about that one here for Fear X, considering Faker has had the best laning stats in the LCK this season. Uh, Willer's Nocturne is pretty good, though. And, yeah. you know, there's a lot of things you could do with Varus, Azir, and Nocturne here. And we'll see what else they want to round this draft off with in terms of engage. As I don't know if we're going to oh get an boy. answer about the carrier <laughs> pick just yet because there's so much he can play. You yeah. don't necessarily have to lock it now. 
Unless it's something really powerful that they want right now, like a Renata Glass, and that's what you want your bottom lane to be. But Cassante being available, you know, again, I said before during game one um, that I was surprised that Cassante got overlooked, especially with a lot of the bans in the top lane, but they're going to take it here instead. Got Twisted Bait taken away as they did lock that top lane. And even though it had a bit of a rough time in back-to-back -back laning phases, um, you know, here at the beginning of the week, it still found success. And Udir also taken away. Renata, as you mentioned, the strongest pick that can be played with the Kalista in lane in terms of very strong meta picks. But now what do you ban? Because you just have <laughs> no idea what Karia is going to do. And this is the power of this and execute. Feeling the frustration. He doesn't know what he's laning into. He has no idea what Karia is going to pick. And yeah. you you already have the jungle. Or, or, sorry, there's so many jungle picks available here. You've already locked in yours. I was going to say Vi or maybe even the Lee Sin could be a strong option. They take the Vi and then over goes to Lee Sin. Yeah, I think that's not too surprising. I think the Renata Glass was pretty much mandatory, I, I think a lot of people would say. And then the Vi, you know, does rank higher, I would say, uh, on the tier list right now. But Jarvan being looked at here. Now, Jarvan Oriana is a fantastic combo in team fights. You just jump in and can't be stopped, and the ball will be on top of Jarvan. So could be there. Also could be in the bot lane. Don't want to exclude that possibility. I kind of doubt it will be, but... We've seen it in the past. Could happen. The airy Jarvan brings me back. Where's life? Yeah. Just build an arm guard. It's only 1,600 now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is interesting. A potential Maokai, Maokai pick. Uh, excuse me. Into... Maupite. Maupite? <laughs> Not this time around. That would be scary. Uh, likely to be the pick here for Execute. As Let's see what Clear is going to end up playing into this Cassante. Lots of bands in the top lane. Aatrox gone, the Odir. Twisted Fate is also gone. Might just be a Nar angle here. Nar Azir, we've seen it so much. Zack! There it is, once again, into the Cassante. This has been done before in the LCK. It was also done yesterday in Challenger League. Saw a couple of games of Zack. So slowly becoming more and more popular up in the top lane, especially. Can work really well with Nocturne, too. Really long engage range onto the carries, as it is Callista who will have someone she can Fate's call. As this does, this gives me, you know, more questions than answers. We know it's going into the bottom lane. We know it's going to be played um, by Caria because you can't play Jungle Hui, so that's not going to be a thing. <laughs> but. Well, Will it actually end up being successful into the Varus is the question. I mean, we've seen support way quite a bit this season. Barrel started us off with that. You have really strong push in this lane. You're going to outrange the Maokai. It's going to be very difficult for him to engage onto you. And you have a decent amount of CC as well. You could speed Kalista up. So, I mean, I do think this is a strong pick. It's very experimental, but also immobile. And I worry that if Firex get ahead with Nocturne, Zac, and you're trying to play this you're not going to have as much utility or safety or appeal. Jarvan also very binary. So while I think this comp absolutely can work and T1 is cooking their happy game in a little bit, I'm a little bit concerned about how rickety it can be. It's very fragile. And if it falls behind, I'm not sure if T1 can pull this one off. If there's yeah. any team that can, it's T1, though. I think it's a bit of T1 saying, hey, we are the better team. We're going to win lane. We're going to utilize that to just avoid any of those issues you were talking about. And that, they've done that many times in the past, but also there have been times where they have taken risks and team have actually beaten them in the laning phase and have done it. So these are two of my favorite champs right now, actually, Zach and Nocturne. And generally in the jungle, but imagine if you put them together on one team with a Maokai. Too much well, power. How do you get away from that? I, I'm curious to find out as we are ready to hop into the rift for game number two. So what Zach said there was, uh, what, he, what he said was Firex fighting, actually. <laughs> Ah, I didn't know you were fluent in Zach. Yeah, I know what he, I know what he's. Uh, you know, I've I've been chatting with him. I've mm. I've been on Duolingo. <laughs> trying to pick it up. <laughs> you know, the funny thing about these comps is, I feel like if you took the nameplates off and you told me T1 drafted what Fear X put together, I would 100% believe it. You know, it's one of owner's best picks, the Nocturne. Right? We know Zayus loves the Zach. 
And Carrier mean, playing Maokai is, would not be a shock to anyone. And if you thought about Faker, Azir, it's um, it's his most iconic champion, arguably. So um, next to Oriana, which he is in fact piloting as we speak. Yeah. So I, I feel like it's really fun to see Firex pilot this one into T1. And both of these teams bring in a different idea to the table. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I like what Firex have brought in here. I, I think that the Zac in the top lane is great. Uh, a lot of champs have said it before. They have good matchups into the Cassante. Um, but again, it feels like Cassante brings more in general in the game state, in the team fights later on. But the Zac, you know, imagine if you can get even more tanky, but with more farm in the top side and you're having a good lane state, you're essentially feeling pretty free against the Cassante, as Guma is going to take a very nice trade here already. It's going to feel good, though, for the Zac. He's going to get accelerated very quickly. He's going to get a Spirit Massage early, as this is Karia's 53rd unique pick in the LCK, which is just insane for a support. It is wild that, um, you know, we haven't popped that up really this season. He hasn't played it yet because it's been pretty prevalent. It was in the first week of the LCK, especially. He'll committed. Uh-oh. The Maw comes through, and... They're going to thank themselves for using that heal and <laughs> just trying to avoid as much damage as possible because they were sprinting at them there. Tempo heal. Heal trade. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you mentioned it earlier right before we jumped into the game, but when you consider that Maokai can root somebody with his ultimate and then Willer and Clear can follow up on them so easily, the comp just plays itself, right? And I feel like this comp originally may have picked the Nocturne to deny Orianna Nocturne. You know, the ball carry is so strong. But how they've rounded it out to make it viable is really cool to see. And yeah, these combos are super frustrating. We've seen yeah. Barrel do this, now Carrier is doing this. It's a tough lane to play, and it's going to be a plate here, uh, potentially even off of this wave. <laughs> it's pretty early on. But yeah, this, this eye is also quite annoying because it'll root you. You're going to get hit from the sky, and Carrier can do it from the safety of his own home. You know, <laughs> he's going to be sitting back there behind the minions, and never really going to be in any danger of getting hit by anything as Guma as well. We'll have to see what uh, kind of build he goes for if he's maxing his Q, if he's building Lethality just to be even more annoying and lane dominant. Wouldn't surprise me too much because, again, <laughs> this is why they drafted this in yeah. the first place. Just to get huge tempo advantages, which this composition is fantastic at. The Cassante does kind of stick out like a sore thumb in terms of how this comp is going to come together in the mid game because it's he's okay. going to be that. Cassante. Yeah, he'll figure it out. Well, that's exactly what I was going to say. Is <laughs> he actually doesn't really fit into that theme. Like if they had Aatrox, it would be perfect. Uh, but he's going to be Cassante later on. He's going to be tanky. He's going to be a front lane they have to break through. But he may just be circumvented by you know Zach's jump by of course the Nocturne, and then he's going to get rooted potentially by Execute's ultimate. Um, which was nerfed for the support role. This is something that, you know, has been discussed so many times by Ox, who's on the space standing by. I'm sure he's got a really strong opinion about this, as he's been wanting to see this for a while. Talked about a twin rate and solo queue a lot at the beginning of the LCK, and we just really didn't see it. But it's finally coming out now. Look at those CS numbers in the bottom lane, by the way. I mean, he is just not having the ability to play the game. Like, he's tied with XQ basically in form <laughs> right now. Yeah, I mean... It is what it is. I, I think you should know what you're getting yourself into. Um, uh, especially, you know, going for the Maokai support. It does have a ton of value, but you are also melee. And uh, eventually, maybe they can find an angle where they can just run at them. But for the time being, Callista Hui is just too oppressive. And speaking of oppressive. kind of have to take it. Speaking of oppressive, Aldous, look at that mid lane, too. Uh, drafting Azir into Faker's Orianna does feel a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. Teleport timing here, a little bit awkward. Baker came back first. Closer trying to rush back to this wave. Finds himself 10 CS down, and Baker dominates these lanes. He has the best laning stats in the LCK right now. Um, yep. Chovy coming up as a close second, but and Faker is crushing it uh, just in general. And leaving this up and then picking the Azir into it, at least in the early game, is going to feel terrible. You know, you, sh you got a good draft in terms of how team fights are going to play out and your combos with the Zac, with the Nocturne, etc. But in terms of Pryo, you know, bottom side of the map, it's not there. Not going to happen. Doesn't exist. I think that, uh, you know, especially early on in spring, we were calling the Void Bubs kind of consolation prize. I think they basically still are, although uh, junglers like to get them early just to, ooh, close her a little bit away from level six. He finally gets it. Unfortunate timing for him as he was definitely trying to go in with the Nocturne to try to set something up, maybe force a flash, but doesn't quite get it as the minion did not die. Yeah, the minion timing there, not... 
Not what he expected. I think he thought he was going to get it on the slide, grab Faker's flash, worst case scenario, but Wither there, uh, if Faker does not flash or misses it, then he dies. So nice attempt, but ultimately does fall flat on its face. And yeah, this just keeps happening down here. It's going to be a sad, sad laning phase for poor old Hanna. Yeah. And yeah, looks like Guma has a level, uh, a high level Q as Execute flashes in um, and then he walks away. As now, <laughs> uh, Ignite is coming in and the Nocturne level six, it looks like this will work out as first blood given over to the Nocturne. Baited, got him. And outsmarted. Baited, outsmarted. Oh, you thought Execute wasted his flash. He's going in. And T1 is like, all right, come on Hold over, me. come down here. <laughs> and it's just one of those moments where you're like, oh, Execute. You poor, poor support who always engages, no matter what, even if it doesn't make sense. But with Willer there and with level six, look at where he is. He's just on Krugs. And this is probably a call from Execute, because look at Willer. He's finishing the Krugs here to hit six. And then Karia comes back in, and Willer is like, well, I'm getting six off the Krugs. Execute's play paying attention to the map. He's paying attention to his jungler. Willer goes in. And I uh, could just imagine the nice uh, right after this. Yeah. I can hear it. <laughs> True. And closer. Yeah, he's fine. Uh, although Kerry is on the roam, just a bit. Timing here with Guma. Um, just a little bit off, so he's going to spend some time in mid just to help out. As will execute and land some more poke. But uh, yeah, it's a nice kill. I mean, that's what you want on the Nocturne. It, it does look like Wheeler will be going for the Stride Breaker build once again. Um, I've mentioned it before, I think Hexplate is very good for solo queue, but maybe for the pro scene where you're not ulting on cooldown, it does make sense to have something that makes you just a bit more sticky to make those ults more powerful rather than just um, getting more of them. Yeah, especially into a team like T1 that's so good at slippery, you know, slipperly getting out of... Slipperly. Uh, slipperly slipping out. <laughs> um, you know, call Slippy from the Star Fox team. Yeah. Figure this one out. I don't know. I need to get bailed out. Uh, but yeah, no, they are very... Renato was banned. Sorry, Wolf. <laughs> They're very good at... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's been a day. But uh... <laughs> look... They're very good at getting out of uh, very sticky engages, and speaking of getting out, um, he does. But yeah, I like the Stride Breaker. I think it's very good in pro. I think you make good points. Uh, this lane is starting to kind of turn around a little bit after we did see that kill from Willer. And Hanna still 20 CS down, but he's got that Dirk. He's stacking his tier. You gotta be careful, Gummy repeatedly getting hit by these arrows. He is outranged in the 1v1. Obviously, with play, that equation changes, but he keeps getting hit by these, so they're actually turning around in a big hurry. Yeah. And you look at the enemy team, if you're looking from Firex's standpoint, uh, this is a fantastic Lethality Varus game. As I'm going to hold that thought, Willer is here, maybe looking for a dive. It is a 3v3, yes, but... I'm not sure if Owner can really even get away from this as Willer's going to do a bunch of damage. He just ults on the Guma, nearly takes him out, but he lives as now Owner has to flash away, but Willer might pay the price. One more ability would do it as Karia. He's desperate and he gets it. And even a kill onto the Malkai as well. And this has gone totally awry as now even Faker's coming in. They don't even need him. Guma got to pick up the double kill. Oh, the execution here from Firex a little off. I mean, Faker was pushed into by Closer, so he couldn't come down initially and help out on the play. And Willer goes in, but he doesn't have the damage to instantly get the kill. So he has to flash out and you know, Nocturne, as everyone knows, is a champion that's pretty binary. He doesn't have much utility after the initial. I went in, I pressed my buttons. Uh, if you don't get the kill, you got to get out. And you're not going to be able to do much. And then Jarvan is there for the turn by Owner. So Guma goes super low here, gets the smite. Willer decides, okay, let's go in on this play because Owner's feared. And he instantly goes in, oh. but Flash comes through. He does not have the damage, and the turn is there. We're not done fighting, though. Yeah, the carry of shield as well, and that replay, excellent timing. And now Owner in a little bit of trouble. Here's Closer. Very nice scoop on a two, but the first person to go down is Execute, and now Closer's in trouble. They commit to it heavily, and T1 respond in kind immediately there. And they have already taken about a thousand and a half gold lead in this game. Yeah, and it's not the first time we've seen Willer play this Nocturne pick, and then you know, he makes some plays happen proactively early, but he's trading down, and he's the one who's picking up these really important kills, and it's not giving kills over to Varus, giving kills over to Azir. And that's really frustrating here for Fear X because he's trying to be proactive, he's trying to get his team ahead, but he's really the one who's picking up a majority of that gold. 
And T1 are winning elsewhere on the map. And now the Callista, who is still 20 CS up, has three kills. And T1 definitely have the stronger composition in terms of how this is going to play out in the mid game. And they already have the lead they need. And I feel like it's accelerated. It should have been a huge lead from the laning phase alone, but these skirmishes have really backfired for Virex. So now T1's going to have that two dragon lead. Again, expected, but two dragons plus gold is a little bit uh, tough oh, to stomach. Chemtech. Oh, Ox, such, you know, Ox, he, he was a little bit, um, he, he had a lot of downtime, you know, he, he was feeling a bit bored. Either way, guys, we do have the engage once again. This is the combo. You press your R buttons, but now owner's going to do the same as he will just flag and drag out. And it's yeah. not going to have the damage, the follow-up, not quite there. A little bit too far away from Turret. Isaias is crushing uh, this matchup. Yeah, he's kind of owning him here. And Clear's going to have to flash away from this, but he will proc the passive. At least he's got that, but that's not the way this lane is supposed to look. Lord. No, I mean, Clear should, in theory, be winning this lane. And, it, you know, getting all in on, it's totally worth committing the Ghost to get the Zac passive. That is super important for extended team fights with how they want to use the combo we talked about earlier, but also with Zac. You know, we saw at the bottom side there, they end up getting a kill, but it's, a, again, a kill going over to Willer. As we're going to go back to this skirmish here, Willer is up a level. He has Execute with him, Execute's on the roam, and they think they have the numbers advantage, but Keria is also here. And it just takes so long to kill Owner, and Keria makes just so much of uh, his value here with the burst, the speed up, also the shield coming through is just so much that they end up crushing this fight and get the turnaround. Two kills for one, even with the Emperor's Divide coming through. And then here, unfortunately for Owner, they're away from the turret, so his uh, ultimate isn't going to get value in terms of pushing them into aggro. Yeah. Also, at the end of the day, even with cleanse, like you're just taking so much upfront damage, and Callista can only do so much without her flash. Um, if only, you know, she could use Fate's Call to get herself out. That would be nice, but not the case, of course, as we are having a little bit of a scuffle here over the bubs. Owner would like to deny some and get some XP of his own. As in comes Carrie, he's going to land that ult now onto Henna. And that's about it. Execute wanted to hex flash in to take a little damage, but he was a little out, out of range. <laughs> um, I just want to get away. He doesn't want to get hit by anything there as Henna backed off. Uh, Baker ulted in mid. We didn't talk about it, but you guys could have sussed it out. Um, so they, they did. <laughs> <laughs> never uh -oh. not funny. Guma in trouble again, but he's going to use the flash to try to get away. Is it enough? I'm not so sure. The damage is put into execute, and at least it's traded back as now. Karia considering a 1v1 of his own, but Hanna is very strong at this point in time. Yeah, pretty critical that Guma picks up that kill, actually. So really well played there. And a lot of damage, obviously, from Karia coming through. He does have his support item, Zazax, complete. So he is doing a lot of damage. He's also got some extra movement speed from his Aether Wisp that he picked up here, and he just went straight cooldown reduction so he could just channel those spells as quickly as possible. And so he's hit a pretty big spike here. He does a lot of damage. We'll watch this once again. The Flash, unfortunately, not enough here as Execute gets pulled back by the Maw. Ult comes through, and then Execute is able to get this as Guma's flashing, so he still follows through. And Aftershock buys him a ton of time here, but he still ultimately goes down as Guma's able to rend him before he dies. Otherwise, Karia gets the kill. Feels much better this way for for Guma picking it up himself. Yeah. See that it's Shirelia's first for Karia, which is pretty interesting on the way, but, you know, it's got some AP, and I think especially against support Maokai, who's just going to be building, hopefully, Trailblazer and a lot of movement speed items and sprinting at you, you would like to be able to respond a little bit, at least, with Hui's kit and with the Shirelia's. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll ever match, as um, <laughs> Guma's... Dancing around the turret, ignoring Clear entirely. And now he's going to get to work onto this Zack, as Clear's going to be forced to use his ultimate ability. Looks like he doesn't have the hop, and he's in a lot of trouble. No more passive, and that's a kill onto the Zack. Yeah, unfortunately, the Callista is just so big at this point, and the turret was so low, there was not much Clear could do in that situation. Tries to use his kit, but there's no teleport for Closer, so he can't come down and help out. That's the turret, and that's a kill. And all about to execute. Speaking of which, we are going to see the all out here on a closer as Zeus. He, uh, yeah, this is just insane. It's like, okay, bring me my next target. I've yeah. gotten the passive out of Zach. I've gotten the flash out of closer <laughs> on the Azir. <laughs> and Harry has got the blast cone. <laughs> yeah, imagine if he had to blow his flash so that more action could be created in the future. But no, not, not going to happen.
They've got everything on lock right now, and it's a 5-7 to seven kill score here, so it looks like, oh, maybe if you look at the kill numbers alone, it feels like a close game, but a two-dragon lead, this turret going down, T1 sitting at like a 3k gold lead right now, and Clear doesn't have his passive from the earlier play. There's no save in this. If he had his passive and the turret was more healthy, he'd probably still be doomed, but he doesn't have either of those things, and so he does go down an additional time. And as you mentioned, Closer has to blow his flash. He is pushed out of top lane by Zayas right afterwards. Spherex do have a group up on this, but they don't really have control. Just because you're there doesn't mean you really have control. As Faker is going to back without teleport. So now they do have some modicum of control here over this objective. But again, it's Chemtech Soul. A solo Chemtech Dragon isn't going to feel amazing. It's going to feel decent for this comp, but... I think T1 are happy to, if they had to, give it up. And they've actually given enough time for Faker to walk back now. He has ult, so we'll see if this ends up being a real fight. He's going to go for the minions under the turret instead. As it feels like Fear X are just really indecisive about what play they want to make here. They're going to push top. Clear does have TP. Yeah. See that Henna's being pushed in right now, actually, in the mid lane. So the mid prio not quite there. Now Owner looking for the combo. Faker is not here, though, but still they're going to go for a TP coming in from Faker right now. As not exactly the cleanest fight, but T1's still going to capitalize. They will take out, execute, and oh, closer! One auto away, and that'll do it. Owner going to steal it away from Caria. Faker's got to be so mad, man. There's just no way he's going to keep up with Chovy like this. If Caria <laughs> keeps playing like this, it's just not going to happen. He's 0 0 4. Oh, it's starting off the week behind Chovy. You never want to see it. Hey, at least he got the one. You know? Yeah. It's only one behind. He did get the POG in game one for those who missed it. So just one behind now. But yeah, this is a really cool combo. And I think so much damage is done by Caria with this ult, with the Jarvan Cataclysm here. Look at Execute. He's already at half health. And then Closer also gets flag dragged into, survives, but he's now out of the fight. And they're just chased away. Execute's forced to flash. Faker chases here. And Caria just layers that damage on, snipes him from so far away. Doesn't matter because he's dead anyways by owner. Yeah. But everything in that fight was so well coordinated by T1. And suddenly, you know, 4,500 gold lead here for T1. And, I mean, Soul Point is definitely stronger with a lot of different dragons, but you're still happy to see it if you're a T1 fan. And I just don't know if Clear is going to be impactful at all this game. He's just super far behind. And you need this combo to work out with Maokai, Zac, and the uh, the Nocturne onto backline targets. But who is the backline target? Is it going to be Faker, who has arm guard? Who are you actually going to kill? Who are you going to collapse on? Are you going to collapse on a Guma? who has is a ton of support, is so big that he'll probably just kill you instantly anyways. <laughs> I just yeah. feel like the comp is kind of falling apart now. Yeah, it's kind of one of those interesting situations where if the if the Kalista wasn't that fed, you know, maybe if you just wombo combo into Guma, it could be nice. But as you mentioned, if you, if you do not kill him immediately, you're probably just dead. So they're going to put themselves very close to the Kalista, which she will very much enjoy. We do have the Unending Despair uh, tech here from Clear, which has been getting more and more popular in the top lane with champions such as Zac and Volibear, especially. Yeah. A solo queue uh, classic, that one. But uh, yeah, going to pull it out here as the first item. I, I didn't realize you were talking about the item. I thought you were just talking about his, his entire lane. Oh, his. well, yeah that, yeah, that too. <laughs> but uh, also Those. the item, just conveniently, yeah. he did purchase that. Because I think Unending Despair describes what uh, the game before this has looked like for him and what it will likely look like afterwards. He's just unfortunately so far behind. I mean, I like the item pick here, but Closer's going to have to ult the jungler. Uh, Owner didn't even hit the flag <laughs> Uh, and now he's just going to press his ult. Yeah, Closer is in a lot of trouble, although he does have a Nocturne and a Maokai. Maybe a bit of a bait, but they just can't kill the Jarvan right now. He's just going to flag drag back into that one. As meanwhile, Willer is... Evacuate! <laughs> ah! Uh, doesn't hurt allied turrets, as it turns out, so he's yeah. okay. Um, it takes a lot less damage when you... Knock it into a wall on this patch. Is Claire's is going to elect to jump away? Uh, definitely the answer when you're fighting into Cassante, I would say. Unending it's despair. Ult as well. And yeah, you know, the unending despair getting a lot of value. You ever um. just do, Baron? <laughs> you know, after a play like that, when um, fight's happening mid, you only have four people here. T1 does at 20 minutes. Yeah. And it's gone. They have Callista. 
Nocturne doesn't have Alter Flash. They just do it. I mean, they probably didn't even see it until it was too late anyway. T1 very far ahead now at 42,000 gold, 21 minutes in. Clear teleported to a Baron that was gone as well, and the Herald is at least going to get some value up here topside. And now he's just going to back. Like, he can't even get this bounty gold against Faker. His ult is coming back online. What a disaster that play was around the turret, though. For Fear X, Closer just staying, hoping that Willer could turn that around, but he definitely could not into a fed Jarvan, who was sitting on Cleaver. <laughs> now he has Warden Mail. Wait, no clear! He canceled the jump because he was too far away because Faker went so far down the lane. Again, I, don't, I think he probably will be able to kill Faker, just because the lane is so long. But he's really taking a sweet time with this one. As, Isaiah says TP. And he's not going to even pull him back. Okay, well, that was not the way. All right. Well, I mean, he might have been called by his teammates. Like, look, you know, Zayas might TP on you. Don't don't hard commit. Don't lose your passive. It's super valuable for this next fight, the soul fight. But, I mean, dealing with Baron here is not impossible. Uh, Faker's just going to TP into that one. And Sonya's as well. Kind of worth... I, I, I guess he... <laughs> Denied some damage? I don't even I don't even see any. He probably fat fingered, I I guess. I don't know. It's fine. He has done that on occasion. He's not perfect, okay, Valdez. He makes mistakes. Uh, and now we do have a little bit of the combo coming in. The Maokai ultimate layered on top. This is what you want, says Karia just not here. They finally kill Guma, but they have gone pretty far, and the wallets are really heavy right now for the side of T1. You dealt with one threat, but you didn't deal with Kasante. And that's going to force everybody to just flash away. Yeah, a lot of threat here. If the game state was even and the wallets were lighter for T1, feels like a really nice play. And you could have, you know, maybe seen this composition realize its potential in that moment. But alas, it is not to be as uh, a Faker also with no arm guard. He could have been a good target here. Look at Kuma, though, do so much damage before he actually goes down. This is exactly what we were talking about. Because he's so big, he basically killed, you know, 1.5 people's health bars um, and killing the support and actually then pushing Willer down to one third health uh, while dying while the rest of the team comes in and then Zayas shows up and it's Dunzo. <laughs> Karia, I, I think he's in a bit of trouble here. He's on the run. He's got owner to help out and Maokai just doesn't do enough damage so nobody else can get in range. And now Zayas, oh God, that's a scary Cassante ghosting Adam, at least Henna. We'll be able to pick up the kill. Nicely done. Flashing in for that one. Can he get away from the rest of the team? It does look like yes, as Clear will do a good job of zoning. Zeus, though, he's running under the turret right now. And he'll just back off after that. But yeah, nice little trade. Uh, execute does go down for the seventh time, though, well, as well. Yeah, Closer's going to try to grab some bounty gold topside. This inhibitor is just not defendable. TPing in, actually, as I say it, though. Let's see what they can get with this. I don't yeah. know about this. Again, this is kind of the broken up version of the combo. Faker just going to flash the wall. Guma still running away. This is what we were talking about. You can't, can't get on top of him. And he's just jumping away from the jumper himself. It's the Zack can't get on top of the Kalista and Guma will just laugh in their face and take them all down. Faker's going to steal the kill, because why not? He needs some POG points. Don't think he's going to get them in this game, though, as Executor's just dead as well. Zeus, he's trying to bargain for his own POG points. Zeus, ready go home. He's <laughs> done with this series. I think he's going to need a little bit more minions before that can happen. But they are looking to end this, yeah. you know, at 25 minutes. And I think they will. The tragedy of that play from Closer, too, is they didn't even get the bounty gold top. He TP'd in late. You can't oh, kill that Kalista. Boy. And I wanted to give it to Karia, but I might have to give it to Guma here. Yeah. I think I have to. That's what I would do. Oh, what a dominant performance here from T1. Circumstances be damned. This team is going <laughs> to finish it quickly in the second game. Risky draft, but that Kalista just got so big. Uh, it doesn't matter about your Zac combo. It doesn't matter about your Nocturne, your Azir follow up. This Guma's going to get you. And uh, again, tough day for, for everybody, tough matchup, split up like this. You don't want to play a second game of a series like this delayed, but thank you all for your patience at home. I hope you enjoyed the games. T1, they definitely did in this <laughs> second one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're going to be pretty happy with that result, as you mentioned. 2-0, very important. <laughs> Zay is having some fun as well. Um, 
And, you know, as I was saying, 2-0, very important. You got to keep ahead of Gen G. You want to get that first seed. You want to have the best choice when you're in the playoffs, which is definitely what this team is already looking at. Uh, both T1 and Gen G uh, trying to solidify the best spot. And every single game will matter when it is this close. Guma's watching you. He's looking at you. Yeah, don't try to jump on me. I'll jump on you. Yeah. Carry it with a fantastic play game. I really thought he was going to get my vote just based on how dominant he was. And that one combo as well with Jarvan ulting in. Owner and he dropped that ult and keep everybody locked up. It was just a great team effort. The first game, you know, they played a more scaling comp and it was a little bit rockier and the Twisted Fate didn't work out as well as they planned. They still won the game, but it took a long time. It was a little bit rocky. This one, I felt like they were in control from start to finish. Speaking of, I mean, yeah, this one, this they knife. Had a chance. It was close. I mean, the bottom lane was very tumultuous. It was close. It was, it was yes, T1 getting ahead in terms of CS, but if this dive went just a little bit cleaner, like imagine they get a triple kill here and Faker's a little bit late, and then what happens? You know, we could see a situation where you can't get near the Maokai, otherwise you're just going to get comboed. Didn't happen, unfortunately, for Firex. T1 barely skirted by and continued with their lane dominance. T1 Other is, than this, I guess. <laughs> I mean, T1 is kind of the anti this comp from Firex game, uh, team, right? Like, they, they, in this game, where they are looking for these crazy skirmishes and combos, T1 is like the best skirmishing team, even unawares sometimes, their reactions, how quickly they turn when they're outnumbered, how much they can delay. They're just so good into this style of play. And even though there were a lot of disruption, or a lot of disruptive moments, that is to say, here for Firex, where they were able to get a kill, it's like, I got one kill, one step forward, and then, T1 actually trade better two steps back. Yeah. It's so funny that you and I were talking about what the Callista would do when jumped on. Yeah. Because, again, if she's less fed, she doesn't get a kill. She doesn't take out Execute. You know, they kill her faster. She has less levels. Stuff like that. But instead, they're just getting pounded down by Guma. And even if you're getting the kill, it's just not, not going to feel good. As this is the final fight. Oh. Falling out Azir has no flash. Closer left by his lonesome here. Kuma not even saying anything, man. He's in the zone. He doesn't have time. I just want to see if he says anything. <laughs> yummy, yummy, but that was fake or that wasn't even Guma. Yeah, because he got the Zack kill, you know? Uh, I wanted I wanted Guma he to actually say something, man. He just he gave us a little... I, I'm looking at you kind of uh, eyes and fingers kind yeah. of gesture earlier, but we didn't get to see him talk smack or anything there. But dominant performance in that second game, much more dominant than the first. Yeah, just 25 minutes to get the job done. It was uh, interesting to see T1 come back with a very lane focused um, and uh, great win in the lanes, essentially, to just eventually take the win there. So, guys. As you can see at the bottom here, all matches scheduled for this week will be switched to recorded broadcasts. We ask the fans to check the LCK's official social media for further details. And with that, guys, we are done here on the cast. Let's throw it over to the space to break down that game number two. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your phenomenal cast on the day and the other day, and depending on what, which day we're sort of referring to here, All it's of hard days. when we're from the past. Um, I'd also like to mention, um, just for that Atlas guy in chat, it wasn't Orcs, okay? So you can stop the spam. Uh, I am Atlas, this is Orcs and Hooney, and we are going to break down this game for game number two. Uh, let's jump into the draft first, gentlemen, because this was a pretty, um, it, was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a fast affair. Yeah, I feel like, you know, the, the Maokai obviously is something that really performs well when you get an advantage, you can pick up the movement speed items like Boots of Swiftness and stuff, you can just charge people down. But it doesn't have that much lane presence and T1 were ready for it, they went the way, they went the cluster where you put points in Q, you get the early Dirk and they kind of just match pound for pound in the poke. But even then, I think Fear X's composition, like they have the dive threats for the backline of T1, but it already came down to execution, I feel. Yeah, I mean, it's a, such a, like, really T1 draftly, like, I really love it. You know, like, they are they know how to, like, really bully the lane, especially with the rain support, and also they pick Kalista. They, since they pick Virus, I think they were, everything was just so ready on the 4-5 that just as soon as it's go 4-5, just pick the J4, who can actually just 
it's really good, not as good. It's like against uh, the immobile carries. And also there's a Huey. You can actually just really pressure from the lane phases. But still, I mean, it's a really, uh, really, it's a really brave pick that still the enemy team has a Azir who can actually flip and also Nocturne that who can press R and then can you have to, you actually have to play like well to actually execute it really well. But I think T1 actually did a really great job. No, they definitely did. I think that they were winning in almost every single lane, and despite Willa's early game efforts, which were fantastic, we're still able to use that to kind of leverage a victory. Let's uh, jump into our first highlight here and see where things started to go wrong, honestly, uh, for Fearx, because up until this point, it looked like Willa might be able to start a snowball. Yeah, he'd actually already gotten a pick with his fear stall, and then here, the problem is they're so close to turret, it's risky, allowing T1 a spot to retreat, whereas Fearx, they don't have that same safety net once they start to get low, they're kind of just trapped in no man's land. The range of the way and even the cluster long range Q is really powerful for picking people off here. And yeah, it just ends up being a cleanup. They do get this turnaround kill, but it's just Firax picking members off. Yeah, I mean, this is like really kind of overplay. Like, sure, I think they really uh, had a mistake like all year, all year of the game, like from the team one. And I think the opportunity the, from Furax, they actually, I think they actually caught it really well. But the thing is, like, this is like the step, the they kind of went too fast that it actually make the fells off like way too fast. No, exactly right. And uh, we're gonna dive into the next highlight. And this one is only like a little bit later, uh, to be perfectly honest. But this is what really put T1 on the path to victory. And from this point on, every kind of fight was. It was a bit of a formality. It felt like a foregone conclusion. Yeah, and you know, they're forcing on the job in here. They don't actually have the Nocturne all available, and they're committing so heavily on a target who they eventually get, but it's so costly. They end up just paying for it really heavily with the return. And the thing is, if you're playing Nocturne, it's such a momentum-based champion. If you make a good play with your ult, you get ultimate hunter stacks, you then get it back quicker, and every ult, you keep chaining them. You get to the point where you're so strong, anyone who's isolated, you take out. But the second play you start going wrong, you end up using your ult, not get anything return, and you felt they just got desperate after that. And these two quick plays in succession, I felt like that was it after this point in the game, which was really hard to play from there. Yeah, I mean, especially the hurt, it actually hurts even more for FearX because like, as we mentioned, it's like, it's right after the from Highlight 1, it's like just like, after a minute, it's, they basically just, they die and then they go to the map and then they die out again. And so basically they're just not being farming for three minutes straight up. And that actually make like really bad tempo, slow tempo for the FearX when they actually kind of have to accelerate it. But at the same time, it's just like T1 was already on the map and they're already so ready for it. And from there, I think it's just like gold generated from the T1 it was like 3,000 up, and after that, I think it's just really tough. Game. It become tough game for VRX. Yeah, and then they also run into the Soul going over to T1 as well. Because they run the map, they get all of the neutral objectives. One thing leads to another. So congratulations to T1. Let's have a look at who picks up the POG for this one. And it'll be Ona. I think uh, we don't, didn't have too many doubts on this uh, on this space. Yeah, I think he had a really strong performance on the J4. A lot of situations where could have gone a little bit of miss, uh, like here, using the ult really powerfully. And it felt like even when he got low in these early skirmishes, able to get a lot of value out of the Javan. Yeah, I mean, just to already just, I, I kind of echoing, it's like from the draft, like he just, it was like really smart pick at the same time. It's like kind of also easy to die like as a J4 and it's like I think all the skill set he actually uses all the fights, scrimmages, all the team fight. It was like everything's basically was a pretty perfect and that's why he only has like two death and phenomenal actually the performances. Even like this solo kill, it's crazy. This was the moment for me actually uh, where I realized, oh, uh, he, uh, owner is just way too strong for this game. Doing pretty good. Yeah. Doing pretty good, yeah. No, pretty ludicrous. Six out of eight, as of course media has gone home uh, and things like that. And so, so me and Wolf are the media. Yeah. Um, couple of uh, yeah, couple of couple of um, sausage situations. I think, I think uh, Just to remind everyone, uh, this is of course a recorded broadcast, so only the people actually present are able to vote, um, which makes sense, just in case of you know results getting out there or something like that. So. Uh, only those of us that are here are able to uh, to vote on that one. But congratulations to Ona. A little bit of a shame that Faker wasn't able to catch up to Chovy, but we'll see whether later yeah. in the week he can give it a give it a crack.
Yeah, I feel like it's, you know, Fake had a good day today, but it's yeah. just like Chovy smashed out of the park, and it's like, that's how tight the competition is, you know? You, Owner steps up, I wonder if Fake is going to be like, hey, look, come on. Yeah, buddy, don't play this one. Yeah, it's not okay. Yeah, I mean, I think the Chovy play really well in the earlier, so I think it's like, you know, it was a, it was a kind of easy 200, that's what I'll say, but the later later on, as you guys mentioned it, I think the Owner play really well, and also there's so many players that, the game was basically just too smooth. Yeah, and also, like, I feel like Carrier had a fantastic day today as well. And so when you're competing with all of these phenomenal players on T1, it does get very hard to, you know, create that POG monopoly. Um, but we do get to be, uh, to talk to the GOAT himself. Let's throw it over to Deer for some translation. Thank you very much, guys. This is Deer for the POG interview translation, joined by Faker and owner on the side of T1. Congratulations! So with the 10 consecutive victories, T1 has been rethroned on first place. How do you feel, Faker? This is our second game of round two. I'm very happy that we're able to finish it off with a victory. An owner. Although it took a long time, I am just really happy that we were able to continue our, con uh, our consecutive victories. And what today's delay? It must have been so exhausting. How was it? Personally, I have experience uh, with these delayed matches. I think it's a good experience. I just believe that uh, our fans weren't able to enjoy our matches the way they were supposed to normally. Uh, so that's a little unfortunate, but I'm just happy that we're able to give them a victory. In patch 14.3, after Corky's nerf, you, Faker, are the only one who played him so far. And on top of that, you are the holder of the heaping 21 win streak record with him. So what is your keep, uh, secret to keeping the win streak? I believe that I am able to continue this win streak because my teammates are playing so well. I feel like I, the Corky, my Faker Corky skin is probably also a contributor as well. And for game two, J4 made an appearance as the R4 pick. So, did this involve your input or how did the team end up with him? I feel like we definitely had some options. We had about two to three options to pick from. And so, looking at the picture, we decided that it looked like a good pick for the comp that we had. An owner! As if you predicted the enemy jungler's movements, you had such incredible covers and counters. So what about your read on the game led to such perfect execution? The top had a tank matchup, and I believe uh, my decision was based on how mid and bot uh, was going to be where the action was going to be. So I think that's probably why I was able to engage uh, as well as I did today. And with Keria playing Hui for the first time, um, how do you think he did in the bot lane? Given how big of a champion pull Gumaushi and Keria both have, I believe, I just had a lot of faith in them. And Keria, for the first time, him playing uh, Hui on stage, I feel like he did a really good job, so I want to tell him good job. And many fans showed up on site today to cheer for you, but unfortunately they had to go home, so anything you would like to say? Yeah, so our fans weren't able to watch our game uh, from game two, and it breaks my heart, but I believe that the LCK will be able to resolve the issues, and in the future it won't be a problem. And I hope to, I look forward to seeing the fans on site again. And owner. Uh, yeah, I was able to see uh, the fans in the middle of game one, but there were a lot of moments, uh, a lot of unstable connections that had disrupted our game. So uh, it was just a very unlucky day for everyone. I feel like it breaks my heart. Uh, that we weren't able to have the fans on site, but I hope that they will be understanding and hope they support us in the future as well. And your next opponent will be OK, okay Savings Bank, Brian. Uh, what is your goal? We'll make sure that we are prepared for a next match against OK Savings Bank, Brian. 
And we'll make sure to put in a lot of effort to uh, bring up our forms as much as we can. An owner. Yeah, Brion is actually on a consecutive victory as well. So uh, we'll make sure that we are the ones who keep the win streak. We'd like to say thank you for all the hard work for the T1 players. And this will be at the end of the interview with Faker and owner of T1. Back to the space. Thank you so much, dear, for the fantastic translation. Great to hear from both Ona and Faker. And yes, we'd like to echo the sentiment that it is a massive shame that we couldn't have the fans here at Lowell Park uh, for this game. But thankfully, it did go off uh, without a hitch, as it generally does when it is a recording. Having a look at the standings here, T1 are going to reclaim pole position here in the LCK with their 2-0. And uh, Fear X, not too much of a change here as they still hold on to 7th. Yeah, I know it's still early to say, but it is really sort of gearing up for that T1 Gen G matchup to be the decider for first. It feels like they are pulling away from Honda Life Esports and the gap between Honda Life Esports and KT is pretty large as well. So really uh, gonna have to be on point if they wanna keep keep that, uh, keep that up with them in that race. Yeah, creating some separation in the standings, Huni. As uh, tomorrow, do you think that Orcs could be right? Orcs could be wrong. Well, actually, Ona said that Bro on a win streak, so they're going to have to be the team to stop them, which implies he oh. thinks they're going to win against D+. All right, make sure that you get your Orcs Susture in the chat. I've changed my mind. I agree with that Atlas guy now. Once again, apologies uh, for all of the delays and everything like that. Hopefully you can bear with us and make sure that you keep up to date on all of the LCK social media if you need any extra information. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time for more LCK.